what's good y'all and welcome to my review for Scream 6. Yeah, finally watched it man, just found out it got added to Paramount Plus uh, like two days ago I think. I saw Platinum, I was like, oh I'm finally watching Scream 6, I was like, oh shit, did they add it to Paramount Plus? Check Paramount Plus, there it was, I was like, alright, cool, this weekend I'll go watch Scream 6. And here we are ladies and gentlemen. And overall man, this movie was fucking amazing. Like I will definitely say... This is easily the best Scream sequel. Um, this uh, the first one is still like leagues better, uh, which we'll get into it into why because there was definitely something that really that really you know made sure this movie wasn't gonna top uh, the first one in my personal opinion. But we'll get to that. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that when we get to that man. But this one was phenomenal, man. Um, you guys know. If you watch my trailer reactions to the trailers uh, for Scream Six that I found, the trailers seemed like they were gonna go more in a in a more serious horror movie uh, tone with this one, going less with like the the meta horror comedy that Scream is typically known to be and has been, to something that takes itself a bit more seriously and tries to be more of a just a straight up horror movie and not so much the whole meta comedy horror thing that that Scream has been up to this point. And when I, after watching the movie itself, it definitely I think it. Does does lean more in that direction compared to previous screen movies now you definitely have all your typical you know meta horror so that you typically expect with scream you know you got the we gotta talk about the rules we gotta talk about the you know the references and all that jazz that's all in here in scream 6 but i definitely think that we took itself a lot more seriously and was felt more of like a straight up horror movie compared to what scream the meta horror of that scream usually be which i thought was a nice change of pace and i thought was really nice i thought that i was probably one of the ways bigger straights like this movie in general I feel like kind of felt like a breath of fresh air for the Scream fa franchise in a bit because there's a lot of things this movie does differently compared to the first Scream to the to the earlier Scream movie that I think really sets this movie apart compared to the previous Scream film. But anyway, let's just jump right in. So the movie is directed by Tyler Gilliard and, and Matt Beninil Ulf. Alfin, Al Alpin, I have no idea. I'm probably butchering that dude's name. I apologize. And stars Jenna Ortega, who. Gotta say, she kind of <laughs> She kind of bad, bro. She kind of bad. Melissa uh, Barnett Bar. Barry Bar. Barra? Bar, Bar, I know I'm butchering her last name. Hayden Paquette. Hayden Patton T. Panettiere. I'm, probably, I'm butchering all these last names, man. Uh, uh, Sa Sa uh, Samara Waving, Jack Champin, of course, Courtney Cox, and many more. And the plot of Scream 6 is four survivors of the Ghostface murders leave Woodsboro behind for a fresh start of, in New York City. However, they soon find themselves a fight for their lives, and when there were a new killer em embarks on a, on a bloody rampage. Now, first things first, let's get this out of the way. Is Scream 6 better than Jason Takes Manhattan? Because of course, they both take place in New York City. Now, first of all, I gotta say, like, I probably, I'm definitely probably the minority of that one where I actually got really liked uh, Friday the 13th Part 8. I actually got liked that movie. I mean, I haven't seen that movie in like years since my friend. I've only seen, I pretty sure I only saw it like that one time back when it was like on Netflix, I'm pretty sure. Many, 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 many years ago. Many years ago. Haven't gone back to seeing it since, man. I do one day want to go back and rewatch and binge all the Friday the 13 movies with, you know, um, just see what I think of them all. But anyway, but yeah, I actually kind of, I remember liking uh, Part 8, me personally. But to answer the question, yes, yeah, Scream 6 is far better. Scream 6 is a lot better than, you know, Jason Taxman. Now, First and foremost, we got to talk about the cast real quick. Courtney Cox is fucking amazing, once again, as Gail. Like, when, when we get to, like, the big scene with her, which we saw in the trailers, where she finally has her first phone call, phone call with Ghostface, man. Oh, my God. It's amazing. And then her... And I got to also give a massive props to, Court, uh, to Courtney Cox, because her performance there was phenomenal, bro, man. Her performance there... I won't get into spoilers, why, but if you've seen the movie, you guys know what's part of the movie. You guys know what part I'm talking about. But her performance is amazing, man. Jen Ortega and Melissa were both fantastic as well. Uh, Tara and Sam are, without a doubt, the, the heart and soul of Scream 6, man, and I love their relationship in this movie, man. Like, I love the development they go on here as sisters, you know, trying to trying to cope with what happened to them in Scream 5, and I just overall love their relationship and their dynamic throughout this entire movie, man. They were easily the heart and soul of Scream 6, man. Easily probably one of my favorite parts of this film man the rest of the cast I thought was great as well man um there's also of course like a lot of screamers you have your typical callbacks like one that i really love was when um is when sam goes to punch gail gail actually dodges it which i thought was nice you know callback to the first one where you know where um where Sydney punched her. I thought that was nice that Gail actually learned learned how to dodge. Bro, that was awesome. And no lie, that was pretty awesome that Gail actually managed to dodge the punch. But you have that. 
One thing I gotta say is that I love the direct this movie, man. Like, because the the suspense and the tension in this movie is phenomenal, man. Like, the two big sex, like, the, the section we get at the start, which we saw in the trailer with the bodega, when they're, you know, trying to hide away from Ghostface, man. Oh, my God. Was fucking amazing, man. Like, the camera angles they use, the editing, Ghostface, you know, is with a, it has a fucking shotgun. Like, it was amazing. There's some other moments as well as, like, of course, the scene with Gail when she has her phone call with 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 uh with uh with Ghostface that was made like the the just the overall direct this movie man both of these guys man um that Tyler and Matt did they did a phenomenal job directing this movie man they were both amazing man the tension in the suspense this movie man was on point another thing we gotta talk about is of course the kills man the kills like this is another reason why I say feel like this movie definitely went more in a more uh serious horror route compared to the previous one because the kills in this movie man are probably some of the best of the franchise honestly man like they are really creative and really fucking gory in this movie man like in Ghostface himself I feel like it's way more of a threat in this movie compared to what we used to because like I said we see him with a fucking shotgun at the start of the movie at the at um the, at the uh with the bodega scene but there's also this one other scene with like a ladder that was like really cool as well man like the kills this movie man were like really creative man i love the kills this movie, man they were they were expertly done man amazing work from there man the um demi lovato song that actually plays her in the end correct man i like that song as well man that song's low-key a banger man i love that song the um, the subway scene as well was also really well done man like i mentioned before the tension and the suspense movie was on point the directing was incredible but that scene like the, that whole like like the bodega scene was amazing and but also but also that subway scene was man oh Oh my god, that might be probably one of my best favorite sequences in all the screen movie man was that subway sequence, man. That subway sequence was so good, man. I love that sequence. I don't think I also gotta say is also loved all the Easter eggs. But like, first of all, you actually do see a character watching uh Jason Takes Matt Hat on the TV and like the Star Wars movement, which is nice to see, man. A nice little homage to Jay to Jason Takes Matt Hat in this movie, that was pretty cool. But also during the subway sequence, subway sequence, you see people you see people dress up as other horror villains, you see people dress up as Freddy Krueger. I saw someone dress up like Michael Myers, there's a pinhead in there, uh, Freddy Krueger as well, man, like, all the little Easter eggs in the movie, man, are always a nice treat for me, because you guys don't much love horror, man, and yeah, speaking of horror, man, I also gotta give a massive shout out to the woman we see at a Star Wars movie, man, where we found that she is a film professor, and this has got to be one of those base film professors ever, because she shows off slasher movies to a bunch of film students to show, like, as like a, like a, as like, what was like, what was it like, um, you know, in society during that time, in the 80s, the 90s and kind of like showing them off through these movies around what were the tropes at that time and everything man i'm just like hell yeah someone actually giving hard slash movies their fucking flowers man that's what you love to see man someone taking slash movies fucking seriously bro i like this woman <laughs> you know you know and i already mentioned the kills themselves were amazing as well man but yeah so yeah shout out to that film professor man she based as fuck um but i will say that i will now go into the flaws movie my movie man which there was like only really one thing I had a problem with this movie, man. And this one just really kind of irked me, man. And that is the reveal of Ghostface. This movie fucking sucks. Like, it is probably the worst in the entire, it is probably the worst Ghostface reveal in the entire series, man. Worse than Scream 3. Like, Scream 3 was just kind of unimpactful. Here, it is just fucking stupid. Now, you guys remember, and I and I won't and I won't go into spoilers because I don't want to spoil people. Um, that you guys remember that in my in my Scream Five review that I loved the reveal in that one man. I thought it was really interesting the way they went with it, very unique, and I thought very fitting with the times of going on here to go that direction with who with the reveal of Ghostface and all that. I thought it was cool, but here in Scream Six, man, this shit is just fucking stupid. I don't want to get into specifics, but there's a character in the movie, man, that. That I just that I just felt like was kind of pointless and just what his role was. I'm trying to be as vague as possible because I don't want to spoil people. But yeah, there's just a character's way, man, that I just thought his overall involvement and his just purpose in the story was just stupid. And it just led to the reveal being kind of stupid. Like it started off kind of good, but then it just derailed. And I'm like, what the fuck is this bullshit? To be fair, they do make it up with a really nice looking kill. To be fair, man, some really nice, some really nice kills in that sequence at the end of the movie, man. But yeah, that the, the, the ghost face reveal really kind of sucks. It sucks, man. It is easily the worst of the franchise, man, man. It, it's just stupid. It is just really fucking stupid. 
But, uh, yeah, man, I think that's about it, everything I got for you guys today for my thoughts on Scream 6, man. Overall, just a phenomenal movie, man. Like, I obviously recommend you guys check this movie out if you guys have not already. If you guys did not, if you weren't able to catch it in theaters, it is now up on Paramount+. Plus. So definitely go check it out for my fellow Scream fans out there if you, that if you somehow didn't manage to catch this movie in theater, man. Yeah, it sucks we didn't, that Sydney didn't really make it, wasn't in this movie, man. It kind of sucks that, you know, they just wouldn't pay me what, just wouldn't pay the woman, man. But it is what it is, man. But honestly, the movie does not really, like... Sydney not being there does not hinder the movie at all. And I like the fact they didn't do the thing where they, like, killed her off off, off screen like they did with, like, Laurie in Halloween 4. They kind of leave her, they kind of leave her, they leave that door open in case she does want to come back for a Scream 7 or what have you. Which I thought was nice, because I was kind of worried if they were just going to, like, kill her off off screen be like, all right, fine, fuck you, Sydney. No more Sydney. But thankfully they didn't go that route, which I was nice to see, because I was kind of worried if they were going to, like, kill her off off screen or something. But thankfully it does not happen. But, um, yeah, man, that's all I got for you guys, for you guys today. Overall, my final favorite movie is, of course, a 10 out of fucking 10, ladies and gentlemen. As always, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, if you did, subscribe if you're new. Follow me on my social media, feel like it. Links down in the description box below. And as always, come back for more. See you guys next time.